times for you and for me as individuals. We have sometimes, some of us, uh, some of us, especially preachers, we can't get them to come to the church because the crowd is that large.
the torches that he prepares rains for the earth and makes the grass and the plants to grow. Think of this. Now this becomes a shame of how black men thou art, black shame. But we don't realize just how great he is. We do the best we can. We just praise him because he's greater than our great. He sees that the beasts of the field have food and seeds. They are raising it. God personally, personally commands the sun whether it would shine or not. And he tells the stars whether or not they can turn out in the sky at night. These things don't just happen. Also, I mean, honestly, these things don't just happen. God is really the ship. He's operating this universe. And with all of this, God, he, he has time for us now. This man, not even a sparrow, falls to the ground without his nose. How in the world, how in the world, how in the world can you keep up with all this? Hallelujah. Keep up and they keep up with the spirit. Yeah. And, and listen, the, the Bible said the hands of my head are on now 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 some of us yeah. every once in a while when we call, we pull out a few. Yeah. And you don't even know how many you pull out. That's just how many is left. Yeah. God has come with the hands on your head and he got the problem of subtracting every time you pull one out. I don't even he keeps up with it. This is interesting because it's just, it's so interesting to know that God cares this much about an individual. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he had a little sparrow that he's got. Why in the world would it matter whether or not he wants us to plan? And if he's got as many people as much time as he's got, most of us. But, uh, but, but, it's, yeah, why does God care? Why does He care? You don't care. It doesn't bother you when you call and have that come out in the call. You don't bother me. You don't even say it. You throw it away. But God keeps up with the hands in your head. This is the same. He put out a great God, and He's the thing about it. Why in the world does He have to have time for you and me? And in this humorous lesson that we just read, the Bible says, let's not stop the word. It says he went with him. What person could turn God into, uh, God into a certain direction? What person could turn the Lord's, turn the Lord's mind in one direction? What individual, what individual can get his attention? He was the man whose power was dead. And he came to Jesus in the midst of the crowd. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean, and then talk to Jesus. He thought it was dead in the world. He just come, lay your hand on the ship here. And Jesus, who just appreciated that kind of faith, I mean, he left the crowd as much as the rest of the crowd. Lord, to be healed, to lift this man's daughter. On the way to the Mr. Grace, this man's daughter, Jesus, this one of the interceded with him. This is what I miss to her. She came up first. She came up from behind. Now, first of all, this woman is not named. So this is a little bit. I must have a purpose in that name and tell I think he knew who it was. Now, we know who he raised from the dead from the two people. Lots of lots of merit. That was Lazarus and he's a king. We know who it was that climbed up in the sickle or tree in order that he might see him. That was the kiss, is he pleased? Uh, yeah, yeah, and we know, we know whose house he was in, and we know who it was that bathed his feet with, you know, with his feet and with the kids and wiped him with his hands. We know that was great. We know who it was that was preparing food for Jesus, and, and she heard her sister had a disagreement. But that was Martha and Mary. But for some reason, he chose, this is another time, he chose back again. 